Hey, Way fam, this is Pastor Resty Collins. And this is Pastor Michelle Collins. And we are excited to bring to you the announcements for the month of March. Our focus is on the gospel. Of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. On March 23rd, we are going to be hosting God Encounter. Now, you've gone through Holy Warriors. You've gone through all of the classes. Yeah. But now is your opportunity to have your own personal encounter with God. March 23rd, you don't want to miss this. And then on March 24th is Palm Sunday. We'll be in our Easter season. It's the season of the gospel. Palm Sunday in kids' world. We'll be having a baby dedication on that day, child dedication. You don't want to miss this. Tell your family, tell your friends to come out and worship with us on the 24th. On the 29th of this month, there is a Friday above all Fridays in the year. And this is our Good Friday service. You want to make sure that you are in the building for that day. I know that God is going to do something so special for you on that day. And then Easter Sunday is coming. It's in March this year. Absolutely. March 31st is Easter Sunday. Come on out, invite everyone you know to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Listen, everybody, this has been our announcements. We are so excited that you are part of this ministry. We have something for everybody, and we want to tell you, Happy Easter, Jesus has risen. Join us for our Easter services here at The Way. This is going to be four amazing services that you do not want to miss. Starting out March 24th with our Palm Sunday service at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and Spanish 1.30 p.m. March 29th, we'll have our Good Friday service with our Passion Experience in the foyer at 6 p.m. This will be a recreation of biblical events that have made a major impact on our history, our present, and our future existence. We'll go right into a Good Friday service to remember at 7 p.m. March 31st is our Easter services, sunrise service at 6 a.m., and a resurrection service at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and Spanish 1.30 p.m. We'll also have amazing youth services, and our kids' world will be celebrating with rock climbing, pony rides, laser tag, petting zoo, and thousands of Easter eggs, and learning about our risen Savior. Come out and join us for our Easter services here at The Way. April 7th as we start our life-changing series on the end times. God created the earth, the stars, and the seas, and everything in between, but still, 
he calls me his masterpiece. The delicate innermost parts of me were made at the peak, the highest degree of intricacy, intimacy. Fearfully and wonderfully made, he's seen everything he wanted in me. So when I look in the mirror and you ask me what I see, I'll tell you, I see a masterpiece. his eyes wide open oh my goodness and all of a sudden he comes to life how is this man possibly getting up there is a god because god was on his side that night here comes wilder again great punch from fury where did that come from and now wilder's holding on he not only got up and came back but then he started giving wilder a beating deontay wilder is struggling fury somehow has come back he showed the world what he can do under pressure. He can come back from the dead, fight to win until the final bell goes. Fury celebrates one of the greatest sporting stories you would ever, ever see. He feels what hold me back, cause what don't kill me made me strong. Victory left. We on attack. Ain't looking back. Join us for Leadership University's Spring Orientation. Our next orientation will be Sunday, April 7th at 1.30 p.m. in our EC building with programs like Nonprofit Care and Counseling, Apologetics, Get Your Associate's Degree in Christian Leadership. We'll have classes in Leadership, Theology, Biblical Studies, and Foundations. Come and learn about new options for attending. Once again, that's Sunday, April 7th at 1.30 p.m. in our EC building. Be sure to register your kids today in Kids World. Attention all men. Be sure to register today for Men's Advance 2024. Registration can be done on the app or with the men's ministry. I'm expecting a high impartation from the hand of God. Just a huge break for myself, for my brothers, and, you know, just for that, so we can be in, in, in a higher level. We're always going to receive from God, but I want to be intentional with what we receive. I want to put it into action. Set the captains free. You leave the heavy burden. And even now so I, I run a business, and um, I, it's one of the biggest struggles of my life, mentally, physically. But uh, he said something last night that there's a process. 
Man, this is God's business, it ain't mine. I remember I didn't have nothing. I remember I was just lost. I remember I felt hopeless. And uh, I gave my, my, my life to God and he changed me. He molded me to be a better me. Space is limited, so be sure to register on the Way app, or you can turn in your deposit to lock in your spot today. Let's get ready, because Sunday, April 21st, we'll be having Family Feud, Family Fun. That's at 6 p.m., April 21st, Sunday, here at the Way. Sunday, June 2nd at 6 p.m. will be our own Ways Got Talent talent show. This is a volunteer appreciation night that you don't want to miss. That's Sunday, June 2nd at 6 p.m. Let's play ball. Saturday, September 7th at 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., we are going to be having a softball tournament. So come on out for this volunteer appreciation event and let's play ball. Join us for our Easter services here at The Way. This is going to be four amazing services that you do not want to miss. Starting out March 24th with our Palm Sunday service at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and Spanish 1.30 p.m. March 29th, we'll have our Good Friday service with our Passion Experience in the foyer at 6 p.m. This will be a recreation of biblical events that have made a major impact on our history, our present, and our future existence. We'll go right into a Good Friday service to remember at 7 p.m. March 31st is our Easter services, sunrise service at 6 a.m., and a resurrection service at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and Spanish 1.30 p.m. We'll also have amazing youth services, and our kids' world will be celebrating with rock climbing, pony rides, laser tag, petting zoo, and thousands of Easter eggs, and learning about our risen Savior. Come out and join us for our Easter services here at The Way. Popped his eyes wide open. Oh my goodness! And all of a sudden, he comes to life. How is this man possibly getting up? There is a God because God was on his side that night. Here comes Wilder again. Great punch from Fury. Where did that come from? And now Wilder's holding on. He not only got up and came back, but then he started giving Wilder a beating. Deontay Wilder is struggling. Fury somehow has come back. He showed the world what he can do under pressure. He can come back from the dead, fight to win until the final bell goes. Fury celebrates one of the greatest sporting stories you would ever, ever see. Me fears will hold me back, cause what don't kill me made me strong. We do relax. We on attack. Ain't looking back.
Welcome to Wednesday service. We came to worship the King of Kings, the God that will never let us down. So let's pray.
fight your battle. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battle. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battle. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battle. Talking to you. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battle. Jehovah meets your needs. Jehovah Jireh meets your needs. Pour up my healing. circumstances anymore but I'm going to trust in the name of Jesus if that's you I want you to lift your hands to heaven tonight as we sing these praises out to the Lord sing it with me blessed assurance Jesus is mine he's been my fourth man in the fire time after time Born of His Spirit Come on, sing it, church And washed in His blood He did for me on Calvary It was more than enough Sing And I trusted Lift it up Sing it again, sing. I trust in God. Who will never fail. my 
song. Come on, let's sing it out. King and Savior.
It's moments like these. It's moments just like these. And atmospheres just like these. That your problems at one point began to, they looked like a Goliath in front of you. But when you're in an atmosphere of the all-loving God, the almighty God, all-sovereign and all-powerful and all-knowing God, when you're in an atmosphere of a God like that, your problems begin to seem oh so little in the presence of an almighty God. And in this moment, when we fix our eyes on what he's done, when we think about the good things that he can do for you, I want to encourage you right now in this place, you can trust in God with your problems, with your heart, with your life. Right now in this moment, just close your eyes all over this room. Just begin to think about God. Think of all the good things he's done for you. Think about how faithful he's been to you. Oh, but times are tough right now, but he's still good. You have breath in your lungs. He's a good God. You're here in this room. He's faithful. You made it this far. Just think, just think. Even for a moment, think. Take your eyes off of everything that's going on in this room and just think about the Lord. Just think about Him. Just think about the Lord. Think of His goodness, His faithfulness, His love of how he saved you how he's delivered you isn't he good church when I think about the Lord how he saved me how he raised me how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how He picked me up and turned me around, how He placed my feet on solid ground. Can I sing when I think? When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he filled me to the earth. When I think, when I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet, yeah, on solid ground. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, Lord you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. It makes me, it makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, Lord you're worthy. Of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Sing it makes me wanna shout, makes me wanna shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are for the glory. Jesus, let's lift our hands to heaven tonight. God, when we think about all the good things you've done for us, we can't help but sing your praises. We 
can't help but lift our hands. We can't help but worship and shout and praise to your name because you're good and you're faithful and you will always remain good and you're always remaining faithful and you're always so full of mercy. And Lord, there's times when we feel like we've fallen away. You're still all so loving and kind and it's your kindness that draws us to repentance. So God, we thank you. This night is all about you and for you, Jesus. Our worship is all for you. That's why we sing, because you're so good to us. We love you, God. We thank you. We give praise to your name. And we, we lift your name up. Church, can we spend a few seconds in this moment just giving praise to the name of Jesus? Oh, that's... No, no. I mean, the kind of praise where you know God has brought you out of something. The kind of praise when you think about how good God has been in your life. Come on, let's make this praise personal to you. Make this shout personal to you. Make it personal. Come on, give a praise tonight. Come on, just a few more seconds, can't we? Isn't he worthy? Isn't he worthy? How many are just so thankful for the presence of God tonight? How many are thankful to be in the house of the Lord on this beautiful Wednesday? We believe God has a word for you. He has a plan for you. Tonight, we spent this time worshiping God, just singing his praises. In a moment, you're gonna, we're going to learn from the Bible about his goodness and his love for us. We're going to hear from God tonight, and I believe you're in the right place. There's no doubt in my mind that you're in the right place. Maybe you're invited by a friend or this is your first time. Really quick, how many are here for the first time? You just wave at me really quick. Just give me a quick wave. Give me a quick wave. I see those waves. I see you. I see you. Good to see you. Welcome. We have a saying here. Well, if it's your first time, we have a gift for you, actually. You could see our orange tent outside. We want to bless you. But we also have a saying. When you come once to our house, you are now part of the family. Welcome to the family. Do me a favor. Say hi to a few people around you before you make your way to your seat. Introduce yourself. We're so glad you're here tonight on this beautiful Wednesday. Yes. And everybody online right now, welcome to service. We're so glad you're tuning in from all over the world. Uh, this is a great time right now. If you want to subscribe to the channel, uh, you can comment in the chat box. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, we love you so much. I, I pray that God's presence is all around you right now, wherever you're at. You're going to get a great word. Pastor Mark was preaching a fire word tonight, so it's going to be incredible. Thank you for tuning in from all over. We love you so much, and welcome to service online. Welcome. Awesome. Woo. Come on, who's excited to be in God's house tonight? If you're excited in God, to be in God's house, give God a shout of praise tonight. He's good. He's a good God. Well, I got a few quick things I want to share with you. Some things that are coming up. How many know Easter is one and a half weeks away? We are right around the corner from Easter. And so you know, we believe that uh, this could be a time where our friends and our family, our loved ones can get saved. I believe we can make this the biggest Easter ever. How many are with me on that? Well, let's make this the biggest Easter ever. We're going to worship big. We're going to attend big. We're going we're gonna to invite big. So there's different ways that we can get involved this Easter, and we need everybody's help. Starting with this Saturday. Someone say this Saturday. This Saturday, what we're going to do, we have a goal. And as a church, as a Hallmark campus, we're going to hang 6,000 door hangers on Saturday. 6,000 door hangers we're going to hang on Saturday. So we need everybody's help. We're gonna spend, we're gonna take a little bit of time on Saturday morning inviting our city. You know, we really need everyone's help together. Let's spread the good news. Who knows? There's probably somebody that's one invitation away from eternal life, from breakthrough, from salvation. Who knows, it could be the hanger that you hang on someone's door. So we're gonna go out with power, with faith, then we're going to invite our city. So that's this Saturday. We're going to be here at 9.30 a.m. What time? 9.30 a.m. This Saturday, we're going to hang 6,000 of these. There's another way we can get involved. 
this Sunday night. Someone say Sunday night. Sunday night, we have an all, all hands on deck prayer and worship night as a church. We're going to spend time in worship and in prayer. We're going to pray over our cities. We're going to pray over unsaved loved ones. Pastor Marco is going to take a moment. He's just going to take some moments to hear from God. And even just, we're going to lay hands on, on the pictures. So bring a picture of an unsaved loved one. And let's walk it up to this altar on Sunday night. Write down the names. Let's walk it up to this altar. And we're going to lay hands right here on the stage. And we're believing that the hand of God is going to touch them. And we're going to see their soul get saved in Jesus' name. How many are believing with, uh, with me? I'm believing for my family. I'm believing for yours. So that's this Sunday night at 6 p.m. Let's be here. Let's come ready to go. There's different ways we can get involved for Easter. We got um, Good Friday coming up next Friday. We got Palm Sunday this upcoming up Sunday. We have um, an awesome new, uh, service we do on Easter morning. Sunrise service at 6 a.m. on Easter morning. One of the most beautiful services that we have all year. We're going to see the sunrise as we worship. And, uh, but there's so many more ways we can get involved. Here's another way. This blue t-shirt up here, this is our volunteer t-shirt. How cool is that? It says, He is risen. Come on, Resurrection Sunday. It says, I am the resurrection and the life. So this is our volunteer t-shirt. And if you're saying, I want to get involved, I want to help serve, we need your help. This is one of the biggest Sundays all year long, and we could use your help. We really do need you. So there's a volunteer rally this Sunday at 1.15 p.m. in the South Hall. You will, uh, we have t-shirts available for our volunteers. Let's get involved. Let me see those smile. Let me see. Can you smile for me really quick? Just give me a quick smile. You're, you'd be a great greeter. And for everyone that was mean mugging me right now, you'd be great at security. You'd be a great security team. We need your help. So show up this Sunday at 1.15 p.m. for our volunteer rally. That's it for my announcements. Go ahead and take a look at this video for some more. God bless you. Join us for our Easter services here at The Way. This is going to be four amazing services that you do not want to miss. Starting out March 24th with our Palm Sunday service at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and Spanish 1.30 p.m. March 29th, we'll have our Good Friday service with our Passion Experience in the foyer at 6 p.m. This will be a recreation of biblical events that have made a major impact on our history, our present, and our future existence. We'll go right into a Good Friday service to remember at 7 p.m. March 31st is our Easter services, sunrise service at 6 a.m., and a resurrection service at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and Spanish 1.30 p.m. We'll also have amazing youth services, and our kids' world will be celebrating with rock climbing, pony rides, laser tag, petting zoo, and thousands of Easter eggs, and learning about our risen Savior. Come out and join us for our Easter services here at The Way. What's up, everyone? My name is Drew, and I have a special service announcement for you. On March 23rd, we are having our mass Adopt-A-Block outreach here at the Hallmark campus at 9.30 a.m. Pastor Marco said it. It is the year of the harvest, but we need your participation, and Resurrection Sunday is right around the corner. So we need all hands on deck. Also, you guys have been asking for it. Hallmark is gonna officially have their own Adopt-A-Block team. We're launching it the same day. So now you have plenty of opportunity to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. And this is what we're doing. We're bringing the love and power of Jesus Christ into our San Bernardino community. And we're loving people back to life with the love and power of Jesus Christ. So save the date, March 23rd at 9.30 a.m. We hope to see you there. Expungement Job Fair and Immigration Forum. 
Already, as you see behind me, our foyer has been full all day long with people coming in, looking to have their record expunged so that they can have a new start, looking to find a great job so they can take care of their families, looking to get advice on immigration so they no longer have to fear um, their immigration status. One of the greatest things that's happened is they've come into our sanctuary today and they have received the gospel. We have had hundreds of salvations and they know that God loves them. I'm here today for the job fair um, to see what opportunities I can get as a stay-at-home mom. Um, my sister-in-law, Alicia Montes, um, goes to this church and she gave me this opportunity to come here. I'm very thankful for the church for doing this. I'm here for record expungement. It's kind of hard to do it uh, other ways, so I've heard this uh, from f friends and family. I came here today for job employment. Uh, turns out that I gave my life to Jesus Christ to start my life all over again so I can change my ways and become a new person. We just had our largest job fair record expungement and immigration forum ever. And one of our greatest partners has been San Bernardino County Public Defender. And Thomas Sohn is the head of that department. And he has a testimony he wants to share that happened today. So I had a client who I represented over 22 years ago uh, who saw me up on stage today. Uh, he was just released uh, from incarceration. He came up to me afterwards, uh, knew exactly who he was. We shared a moment to uh, hug uh, and just talk about past times, his experiences, and he was so thankful. Uh, you know, we do what we do because we believe it's the right thing to do, but sometimes we don't know what the actual outcomes are. Uh, and just to see him again and see how thankful he was, this really touches my heart. Hey man, good evening. You know, that last video, that was last Thursday, and we had over a 1,000 people from the community to come out to that event. Some of them ended up leaving with jobs. Some of them left with their records expunged. Others left with their immigration process being uh, moved forward. But 203 of them left with Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Amen? Aren't you so glad that we get to go to a church that really cares about transforming the city in such practical ways? There's a scripture we got on the screen here, and it says this. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. My name is Gary Hornsby, and I have the honor tonight to be able to lead us in our impact moment. But I just want to break down this verse a little bit for us, because you notice Jesus, first of all, he says he's speaking to his disciples. And that begs the question of us, of, is he, do you feel like when he says he's speaking to his disciples, is he speaking to you? Do you consider yourself, do you see yourself as a disciple of Jesus Christ? Then he says, if you believe that you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, then you should probably have a desire in your heart to come after him, to follow after him, to model your life after the life that he modeled for us. Do you have that desire in your heart tonight? Next, he says, let him deny himself. Oh, man, we're so selfish, aren't we? We always want what we want. You ever notice that about yourself? We always want what we want. And he tells us when we crucify ourselves, we, we are denying that sinful nature and it helps us to pick up our cross. And notice he says, deny himself and pick up his cross. He made it so personal, didn't he? He didn't say, hey, go pick up some crosses. Like, hey, you want to carry my cross for a little bit? Hey, I'll carry your cross for you. And no, each one of us have a personal responsibility. There's something that is necessary for our life, something for us to pick up, to follow him. And it's killing that self-preservation. So many times, everything we do in life, we look at through the lens of how is this going to affect me. Self-preservation is a strong emotion that all of us struggle with. Next, he says, follow me. He's inviting us, will you walk in my footsteps? And this probably didn't make much sense to them then, but when they saw him on that cross, they said, oh, I understand. Now I get it. And it wasn't that Jesus was calling them because he wanted them to endure hardship, 
But he understood it was necessary for them to understand the practice of denying something of themselves, crucifying this self-preservation. Because in the next verse after this, it says that if we do that, that we're going to find the life that we're looking for. You see, there's a resurrection on the other side of the cross. And Jesus is leading us into a resurrected life where we walk in the power of his resurrection. You see, there is no resurrection without the cross. It is necessary for us to endure crucifying the flesh if we're going to walk in the fullness of God. You know, and so this coming, as we prepare for our tithes and offerings today, and if you need an envelope, they got ushers walking around. But in 11 days, we're going to have the resurrection offering. And I just want to tell you a quick thing. A few years ago, I have my, one, my middle son, when his older brother passed away, it spun my middle son out of control. And he started hanging out with the wrong people and started doing drugs. Just everything that a, a godly parent just fears that our kids would ever do. And my son had been this way for several years. And one of our resurrection offerings, I was thinking about what I wanted to give. And I thought about how many prayers I prayed for my son. And I thought about how many times I, I fasted for my son. And I realized, you know, I have never really financially sacrificed something great for my son. And so that year I decided that, you know what, I'm going to do a resurrection offering and put only my son's name on it. That's how important it was to me. And I can stand here and tell you today that a few months ago, he totally gave his life to the Lord again. He's on fire. He's in, he's in jail out in Texas, but he's serving the Lord, and he's got some a little bit more time to go. But we're, I'm going to send him all the holy warriors. We're going to disciple him while he's in there. He's discipling other people while he's in there. Listen, sometimes it's prayer. Sometimes it's fasting, and sometimes it just takes sacrifice. So maybe there's someone in your life or something going on in your life, and you feel like there's just a stone in your path that you can't get rolled away. Maybe this is your year to write something down and make it personal for you and, and do something that's sacrificial in our resurrection offering. I just, isn't that something that we say to God? Say, Lord, this is so important to me. And so just to remind you, there's three ways to give here at the Way World Outreach. One is through your, our Way World Outreach app. You can download it on your phone and click the donate button. The other way that we give is uh, through the web browser, theway.gives. And thirdly, right here in the sanctuary, we got boxes and envelopes that you can give as well. So let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much for this season that we're in. To know that you were thinking of us when you went to the cross. And so, Lord, as we go into this season, let us also be other-focused more than self-focused. Let us think of our neighbors and those in our communities, our co-workers, and those that we interact with, those we see people in the community, Lord. And let us be a people who simply invite people to come have an encounter with you. And, Lord, as we give in this season as well, Lord, speak to our hearts. Lord, we want to follow your lead. Holy Spirit, Jesus, tell us what we should give, what we should sacrifice. Lord, your kingdom come. May your will be done. May there be a huge harvest we've ever experienced this year in 2024. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue to worship in our giving. Lord, we lay down our lives tonight because he's worthy. You're worthy of it all. Mm -hmm. Oh, if it costs me everything, I'll give you that.
me everything I'm willing to do it because you're the one I adore and and this is how it works as you surrender everything to the Lord this is going to happen to you you're going to be happier because you were created to surrender your life to him now if you're not like totally surrendering your life to him you're giving it to something or something else and many of us have totally surrendered our lives, given our bodies, our minds, our time, our effort, been just totally consumed with something that actually was destroying your life. And it seemed like you were in a tailspin, like, can I ever get out of this? And all that happened is that you gave, you're created to give yourself 100% to something, but it wasn't to that thing. And, and for some of you, it's, it's drawn you here tonight because you gave your everything to that thing and it's left you empty, broken, and you're thinking, man, I messed up. But, we, but I want you to get this. You might, everybody messed up. There's not a person here that hasn't messed up. But I, I, I got good news for you that today you can make up your mind. I'm tired of giving myself to that stuff that's destroying me, destroying my family, destroying my future, destroying my body, and I'm gonna give it to God. And I guarantee if you give it to God, you're finally going to get some peace in your life. And, and, and some of you can't even sleep at night because there's some turmoil within your soul. Like, man, something's off. I don't know what it is. You'll wake up in the middle of the night. You'll just open the fridge and you're trying to find what's missing in there. Right? Maybe I see some chocolate cake. Right? Uh, and, you, and then you, you eat the chocolate cake and then you feel guilty. Man, I shouldn't have ate that chocolate cake. 
right? But, but the idea is you might be going to the fridge or you might be going to a drug, you might be going to a relationship, but whatever your drug is, that you're, whatever that thing is that you're giving yourself totally to, if it's, if it's not God, I'm telling you, you're going to remain empty, something's going to be missing, it's going to destroy your life, but I got good news for you. Tonight you can make a decision to turn your life around and say, I'm going to make a, a decision to give my life to the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand that he's here for everyone that's here. He loves everyone here. You guys are awesome. Let's say, to, let's say hi to everyone online as well. Let's let them know we're here. We, we love you guys. Let us know you're here. Um, just put it on the message there, where you're from. We want to know where you're from, where you're listening from, from. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this wonderful time that we have to study your word. And, and we're studying a, a really, I mean, it's always an important portion of scripture, but this is describing the season that we're in. The sacrifice that you made for our sins. Holy Spirit, teach us that we'll understand it, that we'll apply it and produce life transformation. Only you could do that. That we'll not just hear it with our ears and our head, but Father, it will impact our soul, our spirit, and transform our lives. And I'm asking you, Lord, Holy Spirit, teach through me that it will not be my words, but your words. And Father, put your fire on this on this subject, on this teaching tonight, that it will change our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you may be seated. I haven't preached on Wednesday night for a while. Um, is there any, I, I know, I know, um, I know Christian said, is there anybody here for the first time? Is there anybody here for the first time? I couldn't see who was raising their hand. Can you raise your hand if you're here for the first time? I don't know where, there we go. Awesome, right here. You're awesome. I mean, first time, some of you guys, right here, first time over there, first time over there, first time over there. And, and, and you guys are first time, you're almost in the front row. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Let's look at Matthew 16, 21 through 28. And the title of this sermon, It Was Necessary. Say it with me, It Was Necessary. Jesus, it, 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 the book of Matthew starts off with three, it has three major sections. The first is the introduction of who Jesus is as a savior of the world. And then the second section, he begins to do all kinds of ministries, healing people, doing ministry, talking, um, teaching. And we're seeing that he's introduced as a savior of the world, as God in the flesh. But also we start seeing him have mir do miracles that no other man has ever done. He's casting out demons. He's walking on water. He's feeding 5,000 people five loaves and two fish. And these are documented miracles, not only in the Bible, but even the historians of the time uh, would write down the miracles that Jesus did. It, the scripture says that he did so many miracles that there's not enough books in the world to actually co contain what he did in just three years of ministry. But we know he made a major impact because, you know, we're in the year 2024, 2024 years after Jesus came. And Jesus is the only person to ever cut time in half. There's nobody has ever, like, it's before, you know, it's, it's, it's B.C. and then, and then we got A.D. and then it's before Christ. And, 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 and then we're seeing that we're counting up from there. Something major happened over 20, I mean, 2024 years ago. And it was that a man came to earth and did miracles, but he did something that no one ever did. Not only do miracles, but he died, which that's nothing because everybody dies, but he did something that no one ever did. He resurrected from the dead. Th that's powerful. And, and either he resurrected from the dead or he didn't. And if he didn't resurrect from the dead, everything we're doing is a waste of time. Because if he didn't resurrect from the dead, I want you to understand this would be the condition that Jesus would have been in. He would have been a sinner like every one of us. The reason we don't resurrect from the dead unless God resurrects us from the dead because sinners stay dead. And that's why every single great man that ever lived, whether he was a, whether he was a great conqueror or he was a great religious figure, every single one of them lived and then they died and then they stayed in their grave. But Jesus was the only one that lived, did miracles, like no other man ever did miracles. Then he died, and then he resurrected from the dead. Now, now, that's really important because if Jesus did not resurrect from the dead, we'd be serving a dead God that couldn't change your life today. 
But the same spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead, because I want you to understand, Jesus did not resurrect himself from the dead. It was a father, it was a spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead. And that same spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead is available right now to do a resurrection miracle in your life today. You might be thinking, man, it's dead, it's over, man. I've messed up too much. There's no way this thing can be turned around. And I have some good news. That same resurrection power is available for you today. Now, the third part of this, his ministry is he does all these miracles. He's preaching. He's teaching. He's becoming really famous when he was here on earth. Thousands of people would follow him, not only to hear his teachings, but also get his miracles. They would bring demon-possessed people to him. And, and there were cities that he would go to that every single person that was mentally ill, every single person that was demon-possessed, every single person that had cancer, every single person that had any kind of disease, after they had encountered with him, he would heal them all. Imagine that. Every one of them would be healed. And, and crowds began to follow him, and people began to hear about what Jesus was doing. But and then he shifts. And this is when he shifts. His disciples are starting to understand who he is. As a matter of fact, in, in, in the same chapter, Matthew 16, I think verse 21, Jesus asked Peter, who do people say I am? Like, who are they saying I am? And well, some people will say that you're a great teacher. Some people say you're a prophet. But, but then he goes kind of just said, well, who do you say I am? And this is the big question. Who do you say Jesus is? Because it's really important for, for you to, who Jesus is to you. Because if you misdiagnose that or misinterpret that or misdefine that, you can miss it all. And then Peter goes, I know who you are. You're the promised Savior. You're the promised Messiah. And then, and, then, and then Jesus says, man didn't reveal that to you. God revealed that to you. Wow. He goes, upon this rock, I will build my church. Now, when Peter thought, uh, get the revelation that Jesus is the Messiah of the world, they had a different interpretation. They literally thought that Jesus was going to come as a king like David and just take over the world. And I could just imagine Peter saying, this is the Messiah. This is this, the, the king of kings. He's come to earth. He's going to overthrow the Roman Empire and every government on earth. And then he's going to establish his kingdom on earth. And I'm going to be his right hand guy. Imagine how excited he was. They go, we are going to take over the world. And I am part of his posse. This is going to be amazing. I could hear the disciples because this is what they were saying. Who's going to sit as his right hand? Who's going to be the right hand shot caller right next to him? And they were talking about this because they were thinking these Romans, they don't even know what's going to hit them. They're right now abusing us. They're putting us as slaves. But this is ready to turn around. And so they're excited uh, because they're thinking Jesus is coming like a king like David. He's just going to overthrow governments. Now Jesus began to see, say something that they never heard of until this point. Jesus has a different, I mean, he has, a, he has, a, he's going to, his goal is to conquer the world, but conquer the, the world's hearts and to save them from their biggest enemy, an overthrow of the satanic kingdom. They were focused on physical kingdoms and Jesus was focused on a satanic kingdom and he was focusing on their greatest enemy, which was their sin. And this is the problem. From Adam to today, we're all born with the same problem. We're all sinners. And even when we have babies, they're cute, but they're baby sinners. Right? And, and that's why all babies, even though they grow up a little bit, I mean, they don't like to share. That's mine. They'll bite, they'll scratch, and, and, and then they grow up, and then you're going to have to, like, train them to do what's right. Because if you don't train them, you're going to train an animal. Hey, have you ever, yeah, this is the idea. When kids don't act right, they must say, who's the parents? Because they're saying, man, someone has not trained this little, this little beast. This little wild animal. Because we have a, all have a sin nature, and that's why there's no one here can say this. I never lied, you liar. If you say you never lie, you're lying. You're lying. Right? You can't say you never lusted. You lusted. Right? And some of us lusted right in service. 
Pray, ask God forgiveness right now. It's okay, come on. But the idea, we, we've all sinned. We've all got angry. We've all said things we shouldn't have said. We've all dogged people. We've all talked bad about people. We've all done some self-destructive things. We've all sinned, but there's a problem. Sin comes with a price. And the wage of sin, of breaking God's law, sin is just breaking God's law. You must understand, it comes with consequences now, and it comes with con spiritual consequences, it comes with physical consequences, it comes with mental consequences, it comes with relationship consequences, and it comes with eternal consequences. Now, we need to talk about this because we're living in a world thinking it's just going to remain like this forever. But the reality is, I was just spent, I just spent my whole afternoon at the hospital, and my, my uncle, he was a pastor for years, uh, but he was breathing in the last breath, and uh, me and Lisa went over there, spent time with him, and he passed this afternoon. He's going into eternity. Now, now, now that he's going into eternity, what really matters now, and, I, and this is, you have to understand this, you cannot take anything from this earth with you. The only thing that you could take from this earth with you is your soul... And the souls of those that you impacted, that's it. You can't take your cars with you. You can't take your house with you. You can't take your power with you. You can't take your degree with you. You can't take your new hairdo with you. You can't take nothing with you. A matter of fact, if there's anything on you that's expensive, someone's going to take it before they bury you. So you don't need that where you're going, uh, Lord, ah, take that ring right off. So Jesus begins to deal with the, not just the temporary, not just the physical, not just the healing, not just, not, not just showing them who he was. Now he's getting to the nitty gritty and he brings, brings up a subject that they do not like. And let's look at Matthew 16, 21. It said, from then on, say it with me, from then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly. That we, what we're going to do now, I'm going to make it plain right now. We're going to make it plain. We're going into the most important part of my ministry, what I came to do. And even if I raised the dead and I did all kinds of miracles, if I don't do this part, no one's going to be saved. And he says plainly that it was necessary. Say it with me, necessary. That means it's a must. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's something that, that is required to attain something. It means it's God's will. So this is God's will. I got to do this. Plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the leaders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed, but on the third day, he would be raised from the dead. Now, I want you to get this. They were thinking about this king that's going to overthrow governments, and they start thinking now... Uh, wait a second, this doesn't match up because if you're dead, how are you going to overthrow governments? How are we going to get a position? Like, this is not what we're thinking about. Like, Jesus, you got to stop this talk. This talk has nothing to do with what we were thinking. This is not my plan. I don't know what plan you come up with, but this don't sound right. How could you be a savior and you're dying? How could you be a king and you're dying? So he brings up this subject. Now, Peter the right-hand man that was just, was just acknowledged in the, same, in the same chapter as the rock and God was going to give him all the keys to the kingdom. Now, um, he just got cocky a little bit, I think. He started thinking, man, like, like God showed me. When I said he was the Messiah, he showed, like he recognized, he had to, Jesus even recognized I'm hearing from God. Like I, I'm, I'm hearing from, so he got so cocky about hearing from God, he thought he could correct God. You got to be careful that you don't become so uh, like hyper spiritual that all of a sudden God tells you to do something and you think you got better ideas. Don't forget where you started. Don't forget where you came from. When you came to the Lord, you were broken. You were hurting. You tried everything in the world. And all of a sudden, your life is getting a little better. And you start making them new rules to, to make, you feel, make you feel comfortable. I don't know if I need to go to church all the time. Oh, yeah, you didn't, you didn't say that when you were going to the clubs all the time. Or the casinos all the time. All of a sudden, I'm good now. I don't need to go to church all the time anymore. I'm letting you know you got to be careful that you don't let your pride get in the way. All right, so now, this is what Peter does. He goes, nah, man, we can't do this. We just can't do this, Jesus. 
And this is what Peter does. So Peter took him aside. That's cold-blooded right there. Literally going to take God aside and we're going to have a little private conversation because what you said, I'm not going to correct you in front of others, but I am going to correct you. And you know I hear from God, right? Because you told me I hear from God the, 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 in the same, same chapter. So I got some authority here. So this same God that just heard from God that you said is the rock and go build his church on this rock and you give him the keys to the authority of the kingdom, it's talking to you. We're going to stop this talk because this is not how we're going to go down. But Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Now, I want you to understand, reprimand wasn't like he was just saying, Jesus, I was thinking. No, he said, I'm going to correct you. I want to let you know, this is what the reprimand means. I'm going to scold you. A man scolding God. And he's telling them, this is what he tells them, this is what he tells them, from saying these things. You can't say those things that you're going to suffer, that you're going to die. None of that stuff we're saying anymore. You got it? We're going to stop this now. We're going to lose some followers talking like this. And plus, I got some aspirations. And this don't sound like what I was thinking. Do you understand this? There's a time that you got to trust God, that he's leading you, come on, in a way that you didn't plan to be led. And God is saying, there's going to be a time that you don't understand how everything works, but just God says, trust in my word, do what I tell you to do, and it will work out for you because God knows what he's doing. Are you with me still? So now, put to Messiah, we're going don't, touch, don't say these things no more. And then he goes, and I don't even know, like this is like cussing or something, but it's pretty bad. Heaven forbid, Lord. Heaven forbid. Like literally, have, this is what we're going to do. Heaven in the, you said wherever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Right now, heaven, we bind what he just said. Heaven forbid, Lord, he said, this will never happen to you. And the reason I said it loud like that, because it's exclamation point. <laughs> uh, and this is what I'll tell you. Never say never. I'll never do that. God says, yes, you will. You little hard head. He says, this is crazy. This will never happen to you. Now, Jesus ain't playing. Like, I can't believe that he had the audacity to correct Jesus. He don't even, Peter don't even know what he's talking about. Jesus is saying he's going to die. He's going to suffer. He's going to die. He's going to resurrect. I want you to get this. If Jesus does not suffer for the sins of mankind, no one is ever going to be saved. No one's ever going to set free. And Jesus doesn't resurrect from the dead. Everybody remains dead. Everybody remains bound. Everybody remains addicted. Everybody remains, a, come on, remains depressed. Everybody remains going to hell. But Jesus came to pay the price, not for his sins, but he came to pay the price for our sins. Let's sit there for a second. Let's sit there for a second. It was necessary for Jesus to suffer, die for our sins. It wasn't just a good idea. It was necessary. Now, if you, you must understand the necessity of his suffering and death. If you don't understand the necessity of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you don't understand the Bible and you don't understand life. And this is what's going to happen. You're going to get a false philosophy. Then I'm going to tell you this, a satanic philosophy that will cause you not to understand this. Be blinded to this truth so you can never get saved. Now people, I, and I talk to people all day long, and if I ask most people on the streets or anywhere or family get together, if you were to die today, and this is what, this is, the brass tax of everything. If you were to die today, do you know where you'd spend eternity? Will you end up in hell? Will you end up in heaven? Where would you go? Now that question causes a lot of 
I mean, it causes a lot of emotions and thoughts to come up. But this is what I've learned. Whatever they're believing comes up and they speak it. Because what you believe, you speak. So some will say something like this. I don't believe in heaven or hell. I just believe that if you die, you die. Now, you could believe that, but then I'll ask you, where do you get that philosophy from? What are you basing it on? Are you basing it on your feelings? Are you basing it on opinion? Or are you basing it on the YouTuber that you listen to? Well, that's just what I believe. It doesn't mean if you believe something, it's right. You got to have a foundation of what you, why you believe what you believe. Some other people believe they'll go to heaven because of this. They believe they'll go to heaven because they're really good people. So they have a philosophy, and I'll tell you this, it's a demonic philosophy to make you think that you're going to get to heaven and you're going to be graded on the curve. Just because you graduated from high school on the curve doesn't mean you're going to get to heaven on the curve. See, guys, I trust, I'm trusting in the curve. I know we're all failing, but I'm the best of the failures. You're not going to get to heaven because you are better than your neighbor. You're going to, because I want you to understand this. This is the condition where we're all sinners and the judgment for sin is death. You're already on death row. You're already condemned. And if Jesus does not come and save you, you remain in your addiction. You remain headed for destruction. You remain in your self-destructive lifestyle. Come on, it's only going to get worse. The cycle you're in, you can't break. You need someone to come in and save you and deliver you and give you a new life. That's why there's only one name to call on to be saved. And his name is Jesus because he's the only one that died and resurrected from the dead. Let's give some praise to the Lord and save you the one and only Savior. So that means if you do a crime, you got to pay the price. And, but the problem is price is death, separation from God, misery of the soul arising from your sin. The more you continue living without God, the emptier your life is and the more miserable you become. And then you try to medicate your pain or fill that emptiness with things and people and habits and lusts of this world. And you're thinking, man, I'm empty, but if I, if I just get more of this, I got it. But you find yourself that you might get temporary relief for a night or a couple hours, but then you wake up in the morning with a hangover. You wake up in the morning with emptiness. You wake up in the morning with great re regret. You're sleeping with somebody. You don't even know their name. It's getting quiet up in here. But there's a reality. And then you say, man, the weed don't do it. Maybe I need a little Coke. Maybe a little speed, a little heroin. Maybe that's, man, I need something to take the edge off. And you could keep going down that road and keep going for the entertainment and keep going for the girls and keep going for the guys and keep just trying to figure out your sexuality. But none of that's going to make you whole. None of it's going to make you complete. You need someone to make you brand new. You need someone to forgive you and save you and give you eternal life. You can't save you. And I also say this, a religion can't save you. Be careful. That if someone asks you, are you saved, you start mentioning the religion you belong to. A religion can't save you. Religion only gives you rules. I'm not here to give you rules. I'm here to give you a savior that loves you, that died for you, that resurrected, that suffered for your sins so you could be forgiven. There's a price to pay for your sins and someone paid it. The perfect man paid it. Let's look at that for just a second. This is not no afterthought. Jesus knew his time. The time has come. And John 12, 23 says, Now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. God's just saying, he's talking about himself as that kernel. I'm going to die. But his death will produce many new kernels. A plentiful harvest of new lives. New lives. God is saying, I'm going to give my life. But the harvest of me giving my life, my life's going to be the seed. 
but the harvest of me giving my life is there's going to be a whole bunch of people that get brand new lives. They're going to get brand new beginnings. They're going to get eternal life. I thank God that Jesus gave his life and he was buried and he rose again to the dead so every single one of us can have a brand new life. If you don't understand it, your spirit understands what I'm saying. Now, verse 27, my soul is deeply troubled. Now understand, going to the cross was, was troubling Jesus and his humanity. Because even though he was God, he, he, had, a, he had a body. And he, he knew the suffering that he would go through. The ridicule, the betrayal, the loneliness on that cross. The nails in his hands. The crown of thorns on his head. The shame, the mocking, the nails in his feet, bleeding, can't breathe. His body, his his joints are out. His his joints are out. They're out, they're out of place. He can't breathe. He's dying there. And this is what the scripture says. What am I going to do? My soul is deeply troubled. Should I pray, Father, save me from this hour? But this is the very reason I came. I could say save me for this hour but it's not going to save you. So I'm going to pay the price for every wrong thing you've ever done so you can be forgiven of every single sin. I'm not going to sat, I'm not going to pray for me to be saved. I'm going to pray for you to get saved and I'll pray the price so you can have eternal life. Give God some praise for the one and only Savior that didn't, come on, he didn't, he wasn't a coward. He faced it because he loved you. There's no greater love than one has for another than to lay down his life. Jesus didn't just say, I love you. He goes, let's go. I'm going to die and suffer for every one of your sins. That's a real man. In 1 Peter 3.18, it says, Christ himself suffered when he died for you. I, I just think we become so religious about this moment, we don't feel it anymore. And that's why some, a, a lot of people's worship is so weak. And that's why it's so easy for you to walk away from the Lord because you don't, you don't really know what was paid, how much God loves you and the price that was paid so you could be forgiven, so you could be set free, so you could have eternal life. But there's only one way. It's Jesus and he paid the price. There's no other man that ever lived that paid the price. Men have come and started religions, but none of them claim to be a savior because none of them were. You know, if you're a Muslim in here, I'm not dogging, dogging with your faith. This is all I'm saying is Muhammad never claimed to be a savior. Buddha never claimed to be a savior. They came with teachings, but they didn't come as saviors. The big problem you have, and every single person has, we're all in the same boat. We're all sinners on death row, ready to be sentenced for eternity. And what's going to get you off death row? That means the sin has to be paid for. You're not going to get out of jail unless the, the bail is paid. You guys understand this? There's no way around that the judgments have already been made. But we thank God that God sent his only son. God in the flesh. Never sinned. Perfect. 100% righteous. And this is what the Bible says about it. Look at this. This is good. In 1 Peter 3.18, Christ himself. Someone say Christ himself. Because if it was me, I would have sent somebody else. I said, well, let's do some delegated authority. I'm God. Let's send one of those angels. But God said, no, I'm going to send myself. I love you. And I want you to get this. No one loves you more than God. There's nobody loves you more than God. No one's given their life for you like this. He loves you. And when he was on that cross, this is what he said, forgive them for they know not what to do. Just think about this. You wouldn't do that. I don't think. I mean, someone can't even like cut you off on a free without you getting a little crazy. And you're a Christian. Doing still sign language. Stop in the name of Jesus. Right? Someone just gets on your nerves and you're like, oh, no, you don't even know. Uh, 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 t- what? Huh? I might be a Christian, but hey, you don't even know who you're messing with. 
Uh, what I'm saying is, let's get, let's get rid of that and understand. Let's be more like Jesus. And Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Because he was saying, we can't hold this against them. They're mocking me. They're spitting in my face. They're crucifying me. Every one of them betrayed me. Every one of them left me after I taught them. But of God, don't hold this against them. Because the reason I'm suffering is to save them. And if you hold this against them, they cannot be saved. Christ himself suffered when he died for you. I love this. I just, I just pray you get this. The salvation, I know it's free to you, but it wasn't free to him. And I think in an entitlement society that we live in today, we want just everything just because you're human. But understand this, this salvation had the highest price. And so why, why such a high price? Because you show how much you value by what you're willing to pay for it. And God is saying, I value you so much. I value you more than my son. It's crazy. Look at this. And with that one death, he paid for your sins. For that one death, he paid the wage of your death. For that one death, he paid the weight of your addiction. For that one death, he paid the price for your freedom. For that one death, he paid the price to deliver you from hell and judgment and the grave. That one death made you righteous. That one death, come on, that one death gives you eternal life. That one death, not faith in you, but faith in him. I am saved not because I'm good. I am saved because God is good. I am saved not because I've earned it. I am saved because Jesus earned it. I am forgiven because Jesus paid the price. And I am free because he became a prisoner. I resurrect from the dead and I have eternal life because Jesus died and conquered death. We serve a God that not only died, but on the third day, he resurrected from the dead. So you can resurrect a new life. Look at this. He was not guilty, but he died for people who were guilty. Who did he die for? The guilty people. Who's the guilty people? You know, they, they, I, I'm not trying to put a guilt trip on you, but we got to be real. Stop trying to act like you're better than you're, you are. Come on. Thank God, like, God don't expose everything we do. Well, this week, what we're going to do is just put on the screen... What sister so-and-so did in her little private time while well, she's, she's praising right here, but she wasn't there. Right? Sister Samantha, hallelujah, praise God. He's so good all the time. And then she's telling her husband off like, blankety, blank, 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 going to blank, blank, and your mama and your daddy too. Ah, 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 uh, 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 uh. Praise the Lord. He's so good. <laughs> but he died for the guilty. You know what that means? That whatever guilt you have, you can get delivered from all your guilt and your shame. What God says, when I erase your record, I completely erase it. Even if the devil tries to bring it up, he's trespassing. I won't acknowledge it because when I forgive you, I erase all the sin just like it never happened. Give God some praise that God forgives, not like your brother forgives, not like your sister forgives. He completely forgives because he paid the full price. He paid, he died for people who are guilty. He did this to bring all of you to God. That's why he did it. Now, he couldn't bring you to God until the price was paid. 
because if he brought you to God before the price was paid, you would meet your judgment and you'd meet up with the wrath of God. Now, a lot of people don't like to talk about the wrath of God or the judgment of God. If you don't talk about the wrath and judgment of God, you don't know who God is. He's a loving God. And he'll do everything that he can to save you. But understand, when you continue to reject them, reject them, reject you're storing up wrath and judgment upon yourself. And that's why a life apart from God has natural consequences. And you're thinking, God has punished me. God said, I'm not even punish punishing you. You're just experiencing the consequences of your bad decisions. You don't even understand what punishment is. If I get involved in your life, it's over. But right now is not a time of judgment. Right now is not a time, come on, of suffering. Right now is a time for you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and have your faith in him, believe in him. Let's end it with this. This is crazy. This is crazy. Because Peter's crazy. Heaven forbid, Lord, he said, this will never happen to you. Not on my watch, buddy. Now Jesus turned to Peter, just real quiet. He goes, get away from me, Satan. Peter like, oh, no, you did. You didn't just call me Satanas, did you? Right? And you said that pretty loud. Everybody heard you. Can we just keep that a little lower? I thought I was the rock. I mean, I thought, come on, I thought me and you a few verses ago had it together. Jesus, get away from me, saying you are a dangerous trap for me. You are seeing things from merely a human point of view, not from God's. Now, I want you to get this, is that if you hear this good news about Jesus Christ, there's a demon and there's Satan that's coming with doubt and unbelief and satanic philosophies so that you do not believe and receive salvation. He doesn't want you to believe the good news, the gospel, that Jesus suffered and he died and resurrected from the dead for your sins. He wants you to believe demonic philosophies from human points of view. And you start thinking, well, is Jesus who he says he is? Or not today. I know I need Jesus, but maybe tomorrow. I'm telling you, that's Satan. See, Satan doesn't come with a pitchfork and a long tail. Like, I don't get you. He comes with thoughts and ideas from human points of view just think about it. Do you think this earth just was created? Or how about evolution? Which you need more faith to believe in evolution because you got to believe in this, that everything came from nothing. We're not saying everything came from nothing. We're saying everything came from our creator, the creator of the universe, and there's order. Come on, God has created a, a world of order. Thank God. Come on, every morning you wake up, that sun comes up. Every day there's oxygen because we serve a God that created everything so you could live, and he created a heaven. Believe it. Or you start thinking, well, I don't know if there's any, I mean, everything. If there's any absolute right or wrong, not sure. Where'd you get that philosophy from? No absolutes. Who taught you that in your, in, in your university? Before, before you went to university, you were wise. You came out of the university and you came out believing. You, you came out a fool. Someone taught you. See, being an atheist, you're not born an atheist. You're born a believer. That's why every single child in our children's ministry believes in God. You have to be taught to be an atheist. You have to be listening to satanic philosophies. And it's still happening today. And that's what Jesus is saying. All these philosophies are there to stop you from believing in Jesus Christ. How many understand that? Let's read this last scripture here. God is good. How many know God is good? Let's read this last scripture. In Luke 8, 12. And this is what happened to Peter. This is how that satanic thought came. He began to look at things from a human point of view. What was a human point of view? I want to like, not me, Jesus, let's take over this earth and put me like one of your right-hand men and let's be rich. 
And if anybody messes with us, we'll just kill them. Do you think Peter didn't think that way? When they came to arrest Jesus, he took out a sword and cut off the, 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 the soldier's ear. He was like a killer. That's after spending three years with Jesus. He was thinking from a human point of view. Look at this. The seeds, someone said the seeds are the word of God. That fell on the, this, Luke 8, 12. That fell on the foot pass represent those who hear the message. Have you heard the message? Now understand, hearing the message is not enough if you doubt the message. Peter heard the message. He doubted it. As a matter of fact, he not only doubted it, he fought against it. He resisted it. He rejected it. And not only did he reject the message of the Lord, he accepted the message of Satan. And how do we know what we receive? What we receive, we repeat. What we receive, what? So what do he say? Oh, they hear the message only. They have the devil come and take it away from their hearts and prevent, and prevent them from believing and being saved. Satan doesn't want you to believe. Because if you believe, you could be saved. You could be made whole. You could be forgiven of every one of your sins. You could receive God's spirit inside of you. You could finally get some peace. You could finally live a life father of fulfillment. You could finally go to heaven. You could finally, come on, be a blessing to your family and be a blessing to your kids. Come on, you can finally move forward and accomplish your purpose. This is what God is saying. I don't, saying is saying, I don't want you to believe. Because if you believe, you'll be saved. You'll be made whole. You'll be free. You'll have eternal life. You're going to finally fulfill, find your purpose. Wow. I love it. All we got to do is believe. Now, this is the question. As Jesus is speaking to you and you're hearing this message, are you going to let the devil come in and put doubt and give you a, a thought like, not now, maybe later? Because today's the day of salvation. Tomorrow's not guaranteed to anybody. What are the chances of you coming here tonight and hearing a message, which is the, God, it's the, it's the, it's the Bible message? And Jesus is shifting everything in your life. He goes, let's talk about the nitty-gritty, your sin issue. I love you. God's not here to judge you, put you down, condemn you. He's here to save you, make you whole, forgive you, and give you a brand new start. And no matter what you've done, no matter what you've done, all your sins have been paid for. Just receive the payment. Say it with me. Just receive the payment. Not only does it forgive you, but it gives you a new life. Are you ready for an invasion of God's spirit inside you? Like, you know, man, like beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know that I'm a new person. God is inside me now. I'm thinking differently. Like I'm having strength to say no to things. I, like I got no strength to say no to. I have a peace when I go to bed that I'm not alone, that God is with me. And I know if I were to die right now, that night I was saved. That week before Easter, I got saved. God changed my life. Let's all stand up. We'll dismiss in just a second. No one leave until we dismiss. Let's not be like Peter <laughs> and start talking ourselves out of the miracle. Peter finally got it. So let's not, I mean, thank God Peter finally got it. He got it afterwards, but he got it after, this happened when he got it, after he saw Jesus resurrect from the dead. He got it. And he got filled with God's spirit, changed his life forever. And of course, his whole life was changing people's lives. And he got martyred for believing in Jesus and he died like a champion. We're going to see him one day in heaven. And we're going to and say, Peter, you, you know, you, you know, you got, you, 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 you made us laugh a few times, you little crazy little guy. <laughs> but I think some of us really associate with Peter. And even like, so like, no, nah, that's kind of, kind of like me. Right. But thank God there's real stories in the Bible where people make really mistakes, real mistakes. But then there's a real savior that loves them and forgives them and, Say, come here. I still got a call in your life. Your sin and your mess up does not conquer my love for you. Today's your day of salvation. So I'm going to give you an opportunity. And there's no way to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior without making a decision. It's impossible. It's, like, it's not like you ask it like, are you married or not? Like, I don't know. Well, did you, did you, go, did you go through a ceremony? Well, I don't know. You, you're not married, bro. 
Right? It's the same thing with following Jesus. It's a real decision. You actually have a new birth date. I was born um, April 21st, 1967. It was a great year. But then I have another date. It's my birth date. Spiritual birth date. When I was born again. How many understand that? Now, you must be born again. If you're saying today, pastor, and this is this reality, just question. If I were to die tonight, I don't know where I spend eternity. But I really do believe that Jesus died for my sins and suffered for all the wrong I've done. So, to pay the price for everything I've done. And I want to receive his forgiveness. And I want to live a brand new life today. I'm not, I don't, I'm, you're not joining a religion, but I want to give my life to Jesus. I want, to, I want to receive the gift of eternal life today. I want to place my faith in him. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. And, and there's also people that you backslidden. And if you backslidden, you need to come back home. You need to come back home. We don't even know if you're saved. Get back home. They give your life to Jesus, 100%. Come on, it's the best thing you'll ever do. One, when I say three, I want you to raise your hand to all this building. I want to place my faith in Jesus. I want Jesus to save me now. I want forgiveness of sins. I want to receive eternal life. I want Jesus to set me free. I want his spirit to come in me and bring me a brand new person. Two, and when I say three, don't be ashamed. God's not ashamed of you. One, two, three, raise your hands all over this building. I want to give my life to Jesus. Come on, you're not listening to Satan. Come on, you're listening to God. I'm proud of every one of you. Come on, all our visitors that came for the first time right here, they're in the spinning section and they got saved. Awesome. Ask your neighbor, you want to go up? You want to give me, you want to go up there with me? I'll go up there with you. I want those that raise their hand to do one more step. I want you to leave your seat and come up here. We're just going to pray with you. You're not going to do no speeches or nothing, but this is, just, come on, this is like getting married. Come on, you're walking up the aisle and say, I'm in. I'm 100% in. I'm giving my life to Jesus. I want to be saved. I want to be forgiven. Come on, leave your depression at the seat. Come on, leave your sickness at the seat. Come on, leave your, come on, leave your pain at the seat. Leave your sin at the seat. Come on, church, let's give the Lord a big hand. Come on, people are getting saved because of what Jesus did. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never Forgiveness is here. Come on, freedom is here. Peace is here. Eternal life is here. New beginnings are here. Rest is here. Breakthrough is here. Victory is here. Proud of it. Come on, let's make some more room up here. Come on, let's make some more room. Come on, I need some DG leaders, I need some leaders up here. I'm going to probably need another 30, 40. You online, come on. If you gave your life to Jesus, don't tune out right now. Come on, you stand up right where you're at. The Holy Spirit is touching you. There's tears coming down in your eyes because God's Spirit is right there right now speaking to you. He loves you. God is good. Hallelujah. This is what we're saying to Satan. Satan, get behind me now. You're not going to lead my life anymore. You're not going to torment me anymore. In the name of Jesus, I'm free. I'm free. I'm receiving my freedom. Come on, they're still coming, church. Come on. I want you to understand this. This is not always, this is not normal in a lot of churches. Come on, thank God that you're in a church that preaches the gospel and causes people, the Holy Spirit is causing people to be convicted of their sin and repent and give their lives to Jesus. Let's give the Lord a hand. Holy Spirit's doing his job. I'm proud of you. Now, there's a scripture that says this. The road to hell, or the highway to hell, is wide, and many choose that path. But the road to heaven is narrow, it's difficult, and few find it. You found it tonight. 
I'm not saying that you're not going to be going against the grain of society. But you're finally going to be on the right track, headed in the right direction. Yes, you're going to be fighting. It's called a fight of faith. But it's going to be worth it. Every day you're going to get stronger. Every day you're going to have more peace. But today you're getting saved. And today you're being forgiven. And today you receive eternal life. And today you become a child of God, period. You become a child of God, period. Period. That's it. Okay, today. He's going to be your father. He'll never leave you. Say, man, what if I mess up? Let's all say, confess your mess up and get back up. But God's not leaving you. It's it for God. You're making a decision to follow Jesus as his disciple. The word disciple means student. So we have classes here for you to learn and grow. Baptism class, all kinds of classes. But we love you, and you're not part of our family. And that's it. This family ain't going nowhere. So you don't go nowhere. I'm asking you for a year of your life. Keep coming to church. It's going to get better and better and better. You're going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And don't let the devil lie to you when you leave. Oh, nothing happened there. It's just emotional. No, something you know something happened because before church started, if someone told you, you know you're going to walk up there, you go, I ain't walking up there. But God spoke to you so strong that he got you to leave those seats and you're taking your walk with God tonight. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's, let's pray right now. Repeat after me. Say, say, Jesus, I thank you for loving me so much that you suffered for my sins and then you died to pay the price for the wrong I've done so that I could be forgiven and I believe you rose from the dead today I make a decision to turn from my sin life I'm tired of doing it my way forgive me Lord set me free and fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Today, I am saved. I receive the free gift of eternal life. I am now a child of God, and you're my Father. I thank you, Jesus, for saving me tonight. And Satan, I command you now, Get out of my life. Get out of my mind. Get out of my family. I belong to Jesus. And I'll follow him for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I am free. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Love you. We want to pray with you. Get some information. This Saturday, this Saturday, church, let's do all we can. To, we're going to be here for just a couple hours. But if you could be here this, this Saturday, we're going to give an opportunity for people to get saved. Jesus left heaven to come to earth. We're going to leave our home to hit the streets for a couple hours, put some door hangers on, on doors. That's it. We need your help. 6,000 door hangers. The more of us that come, the faster we get it done. God bless you. We love you. Remember this, if God's for you, there's no one that can come against you. Love you guys so much.